Hello everyone, it's me, Dr. Saru, back again, and today's topic is going to be UTI. So, for most people, it might be surprising to know what UTI stands for, but that's what we're going to talk about, the definition, what it entails, what are the things that are risk factors for the disease, and the causative organisms. Huh? So, let's start by putting this into full. UTI is urinary tract infection. They are categorized by several. I'll start by putting up a diagram to explain how the urinary tract is so that we can explain I can explain further as to how or where the infection normally lies at. So these are your kidneys. So basically, these are the kidneys, and then um, kidney, uh, ureter, bladder, urethra. So infection of all this, from starting from this point onwards, it's urinary tract infection. But if it starts from here, let's say the infection is from this part to this part, this is called lower UTI, urinary tract infection. If it's from this point onwards until this point, then this is called upper urinary tract infection, UTI, upper UTI. So I know that we've known the upper part and the lower part. Let's start discussing what causes this uh, UTI? Yeah? The thing that has been, uh, the organism that has been implicated in causing UTI is E. coli. It's a bacteria, gram negative bacteria, it's called E. coli, that causes most of the, um, the UTIs. So, how then will you know that you have UTI? There are some symptoms which are very common and happen all the time. But before I tell you of the symptoms, can I just go back a little bit and tell you of the risk factors that could happen for you to get this. So, if you're talking about risk factors, risk factors, so risk factors, one, the most commonest risk factor, being a woman or the female gender. Because this happens, why? Women have a short urethra, which then happens to get in infections in most common ways, ascending infections, and even some practices which people use. Maybe some people use when they wipe themselves from the, they, they don't go from the front to the back, they do it from the back to the front, which also increases the, increases the colonization of the, of the, of the organism. And because of the short urethra, then ascending infection going to the bladder, ureters, or the kidneys is normally high. For the other counterpart, the male, the urethra is a bit long. We all know why. So yes, women or the female gender, that is the biggest risk factor uh, as to getting UTI. Two, coitus. Maybe this is a very technical term. I'll just put it in a simpler way. Sexual intercourse. Not only in frequency or just having it, it has been implicated into being a risk factor of getting UTI and especially for the female gender too. So we have come to one, two, then three. Use of spermicides. For the people who like to use spermicides as a way of, as a way of contraceptive, then it has been implicated too. The use of diaphragm plus the form uh, spermicide to have cause or to be a risk factor of UTI. And then the next thing will be host factors defense, reduced def uh, host defense factors. Is this the way right defense? Yeah, I think so. Host reduce, uh, re reduction in the host defense factors, which could be because somebody is immunocompromised. Immunocompromised could be because people have um, 
let's say somebody is HIV positive, so you're immunocompromised. You have cancer, you're immunocompromised. You're using lots of steroids, you're also immunocompromised. And defense factors being reduced, it, um, also diabetes could be a cause of um, reduced uh, host factors, uh, defense factors. Uh, the other thing that could be a risk factor in um, in, uh, in UTI is we've done women, female, coitus, femicides, reduced defense factors, some practices. As I was telling you before, practices i.e. the wiping of back to forth instead of front to back when somebody is has finished defecating or going to the toilet for a long call as people call it so now that we have these risk factors let me come to the symptoms the things that you will feel Same. how will you know you have UTI so it depends if it's upper UTI the symptoms are quite different so the symptoms will differ, be it uh, upper UTI or lower UTI. So let's just do this. Huh? Symptoms for this upper part, symptoms for this lower part. And before I forget, I'm sorry guys, uh, for the risk factors, the other one that has been implicated too is pregnancy. Pregnancy, but most times when a pregnant woman has UTI, it's normally asymptomatic. But when it ascends maybe up and it infects the kidneys, then it becomes sym symptomatic. Like now she can express the feeling of the pain or maybe the, the symptoms that are normally associated with UTI. But uh, mostly it's a very common occurrence in pregnancy and there's no symptoms. Somebody does not address the situation as if she has UTI because she doesn't even feel because there's no symptoms at the end of the day. And then the other thing is menopause. Menopausal women tend to have or have stand a higher chance uh, of getting UTIs. So menopause is part of the risk factor. Then the other thing, urinary causes. So with urinary causes, under here you could have uh, indwelling catheters. Be done with the catheters. Um, maybe because of you had some bones. issues maybe with obstruction, you urinary not, tract you had stones, you had urinary tract stones, urinary stones, urinary stones, stones anywhere. Uh, uh, within the urinary tract and the other thing um, congenital malformations see the other people who are born with strictures which are already like a narrowed urethra or somewhere the urethra so this predisposes somebody to UTIs so if you have congenital don't freak out with the word congenital just means birth defects huh? so if you have congenital uh, anomalies or congenital problems that you were born with that maybe could predispose you to UTI it's also part of the risk factors under uh, uh, urinary causes so now that we are done with that I'm sorry I've forgotten those few let's come back to the topic of uh, the symptoms rather so as I was telling you for upper the symptoms are different for lower the symptoms are different but the most common one is normally the lower the lower UTI is the most common commonest in most people so anyways let's start with the upper what will you feel high fever high fever is quite very much ambiguous so don't any anytime you get high fever don't freak out on like oh, maybe i have something with my kidneys i have an infection no high fever could be found in so many uh, other diseases malaria typhoid all those name them but so, but then one of the, the most commonest symptoms you feel is high fever, one. Two, rigors. Rigors is like you're feeling chilly or you're feeling like you can, your, your body like kind of shakes because of the high fever. That is rigors. And then uh, the other thing you'll feel is loin pain. I will describe where loins are. These are your loins. The part that is lower abdominal part at the end. Near, near your pelvic region, the lower abdomen, this part is your loin. So you'll have loin pain. <clears throat> the, other, uh, the other 
sign uh, symptoms will be vomiting nausea nausea is the feeling to vomit vomiting is the actually the actual act of uh, stuff coming out of your stomach when you uh, through your mouth that is eh? so these are the most commonest um, most commonest of symptoms you'll feel when you have upper UTI so let's do the lower UTI what will you feel this one supra pubic pain the pain will be almost dull at the point of your just below your navel immediately below your navel is where your supra pubic is if you can feel some sort of bones when you go lower your abdomen then just above it is your supra pubic area and that's where the pain will be so there's this pain then there's dysuria dysuria simply means painful urination so when you go to pee you feel some pain could be much could be less depending on the severity of your disease the other thing you feel what is the other thing you feel it's this area you'll have urgency urgency to go to the bathroom all the time to pee the other thing frequency frequency means you want to go to the bathroom every after every minute every minute you feel like you need to like your your bladder was not fully emptied so you feel like you need to be going every after every minute after every minute not necessarily every minute but i mean with a very the time is short between the first time and the second time you're going and the third and so on and so forth huh? the other thing is hematuria this simply means blood in the urine not necessarily not all people get it sometimes it's because maybe of an obstruction let's assume there's a stone somewhere there so it might be scratching your walls of your bladder or urethra that could cause the uh, the bleeding so hematuria could occur not in every person and then uh incomplete the sensation of incomplete uh incomplete um voiding you feel like you have urine you feel like you almost have urine retention you feel like you're not completely emptying your, your bladder and hence you feel pain at the supra pubic area as i already mentioned so this basically are the classical symptoms that people feel with lower uti and um you should not be surprised when you feel this because as i mentioned earlier it's a common thing happens to most women and uh, now let's come back and uh, treatment ah. treatment so as I normally tell you in my videos I cannot give you the exact treatment because I want to encourage each and everyone to actually attend a hospital when they have some sort of discomfort in which area so that you just don't go and buy over-the-counter medicine some of this medication is not over-the-counter and it's good somebody investigates you a doctor that is sends you for investigation lab works and after that come up with a conclusion and a treatment plan suit and design just for you so treatment normally it's just antibiotics that is one two you're encouraged to drink and drink and drink plenty of water drink plenty of water it helps with the relieving of the symptoms it helps with making you feel good and as i always tell you guys water is your best friend drink water all the time cranberry juice if you can get the real cranberry juice the better but then they sell sachets at the pharmacy which is cranberry concentrate you just mix it with water and you drink it it's good for your kidneys it's good for your urinary tract it's very good and um, I would encourage everybody to try and drink cranberry juice not only when you have this UTI but even without the UTI it's always good to try new stuff it helps you and as I told you it's very good for your kidneys and your entire urinary tract system so you get the antibiotics you drink plenty of water and the cranberry juice this is the treatment regime but how can you you ask yourself 
I would not want to get this uh, UTI. So what are the preventive measures? Prevention. As I told you always, prevention is better than cure. You should prevent something if you can. So, with the, with the risk factors again, huh? you're a woman. You already know you're already in risk of getting UTI. So, what do you do? Drinking water helps. There have been uh, chatter about prophylaxis of uh, antibiotics, but it's just chatter yet. It's not really proven if you take antibiotics uh, before or coitus or before any time, then it could prevent you from getting UTI because then you have to be taking lots of antibiotics if you're female. Um, drinking water, prophylaxis antibiotics, which I'm not going to talk so much into detail about because I don't believe in it myself. Drinking of the cranberry juice. This thing tastes nice and I think everybody should try it and make it part of your regime drink cranberry juice, drink plenty of water and make sure you always dehydrate, I mean hydrated, not dehydrated, sorry make sure you're always hydrated and um, uh, hoping that of all this and the things that we've done today you guys have learned something and you've gained something out of I mean you've ha added more knowledge on what GTI is, what it, what, what it contains, sorry and um, the treatment and how more so the importance is the prevention part most of us are still not sick with this thing so we could prevent it before we actually get to be sick so thank you guys for today and i pray you get well and be well always be fit love and love dr sarah see you next time